Hi, I'm Ray G4NSJ, and this is a 70 centimeter repeater. Belongs to Roy G4WTV. He assembled it all, built it all, and he is the repeater keeper. I shall tell you about the radios that it uses. Okay, there we are, look at that. Motorola GM340. Duplexer, not this one, there's a better one, that's the four pole. There's a six pole in there, come to that in a minute. Duplexer, which is in the box. Nothing to see outside, it's a box. And, here we go, the logic, <laughs> there. Don't get frightened by that, it frightens me, but don't get frightened by that. Let's have a look inside the box first of all. There are the two radios, I'll try and hold the camera still. There are the two transceivers, okay. Then at the back there's a cooling fan. The back of the duplexer down the bottom with the three connections, aerial, transmitter, receiver. On the back of each transceiver there, that's a connection to the logic. And there. And there's also a sensing wire, which I'll tell you about in a minute. And that's basically all you can see from here. On the back of each transceiver is that, that socket there, which is PTT, audio, and COS, carrier open squelch. Okay, nice radios, aren't they? Look at that, GM340. Really nice, nice piece of kit. So they're identical, they're both the same. This is just a spare one to show you. The sense wire I mentioned, say there's a power cut, right? This could be in a remote location somewhere, um, no one around to switch it back on. If there's a power cut, the thing powers down. You know, like your computer, that's it. You've got to come and turn it back on. Well, that sense wire, basically, it, it, it turns it all back on again. As soon as the power comes on, the whole thing kicks up and off it goes again. Talking of power, there is the power supply in the bottom of the cabinet. And there's a, a quick view of the front of the repeater with the front cover and lid removed. We now come to the logic. This is inside the logic box little speaker there so you can hear the ident you can switch that off on the front panel first of all the power supply just down there there we are I think you can see that this is the remote switching unit here so you can phone the thing and switch it on or off all right because if it's unmanned you might need to turn it off for some reason so you can do you could just phone it up and say turn off that down there, can you see that? Let's just move the camera down. That's the power supply there. That's a little fan controller, which does work, but it's not operational at the moment. The fan's just left on all the time at the moment. That is the logic. That's the brains of the whole thing there. That's the logic. And there is the audio board, that one there. All very nicely assembled by Roy, G4WTV. That's the back there, audio in, audio out, little aerial, and power there. And on the front, power, transmit, and voice there. So far, so good, you're thinking. This, well, this is a dummy load here at the moment. Aerial here, one aerial for transmit and receive. Signal comes down the aerial, into the box, the magic box, into the receiver. Okay, that then the logic deals with all this, puts the audio into the transmitter, which transmits it up the same aerial. That's the bit a lot of people don't like. It's weird, isn't it? You can transmit and receive on the same aerial, say it's a dipole, at the same time. Perfect, that's brilliant. Okay, so we know what's in the box, we know what happens, signal comes in to the receive radio, audio to the transmit radio, transmits it so the other person can hear it. In the logic box is all the, the bits and pieces, the ident. This one has a voice, I'll play you the voice later. Tells you what it is, rather than just Morse code. There's a, a voice that pops up every half hour, I believe it is, and tells you what uh, which repeater it is, which is useful. What else is there to tell you? Well, I'll tell you what else there is. There's this, this mysterious duplexer. What this is for is you're going to transmit 
and receive on one aerial at the same time. Now, obviously, you don't want the transmitter feeding directly into the receiver. It just blow the thing apart. OK, over to the blackboard. That duplexer I just showed you is a four pole device. OK, this is a cavity. So it's got four of these in it, four cavities. This is square on ours. It's an oblong square box. Very often they're cylindrical. That doesn't matter. It's not here or there. So this is the metal cavity. All right. There's a coax socket there. OK. A little sniffer aerial inside there. This is a top hat. It's a the capacity hat, if you like. This is a threaded rod here. And you adjust this to move this in and out of the cavity. All right. So you can adjust that threaded rod like that. This basically is an LC circuit, a mechanical LC circuit. All right. Right. So what does this cavity do? Let's take the receiver part of the repeater first of all. This is in the receive aerial side, OK, to the socket on the back of the radio. So on the receiver side of the repeater, on the receive radio, what this does, you tune this to the transmit frequency because you don't want the receiver picking up the transmitter. Bear in mind they're on the same aerial. We've got to separate the receiver and the transmitter. What this does, this, you tune this to the transmitter frequency and it attenuates the transmitter signal by 30, just under 30 dB, OK? So what you do on the spectrum analyzer, you adjust this for the transmit frequency and then that will attenuate that frequency so the receiver won't hear the transmitter. Now 30 dB isn't enough, OK? You'll still get a lot of signal coming through. So what you do is have two of these on the receive side. OK, so for example, there's one, two, three, four. So two of these on the receive side. That gives us 60 dB attenuation. Now, in our case, that's not enough. So in the repeater itself, this is just one I've got to show you. This is four pole. In the repeater is a six pole. So you've got 90 dB attenuation to keep the transmitter out of the receiver, right? You don't want it picking up the transmitter. So at the moment on the receiver, the transmitted signal is attenuated by 90 dB. Put another cavity, or in our case in the repeater, another three cavities on the transmit side. Out of the transmitter where the aerial comes out, take it into the duplexer, and three of these are tuned to the receiver frequency. So anything coming out of the transmitter, whatever's coming out of the transmitter, is heavily attenuated on the receive frequency. You don't want the receiver picking up anything from the transmitter. So whatever comes out of the transmitter, it won't get to the receiver. And again, there are three in the duplex, and there are three in the transmit side. That gives us 30 dBs each, OK, 90. So in total, we have 180 dB attenuation. So the receiver won't hear anything from the transmitter because if it does, if it gets the slightest sniff of the transmitter, it's going to desense the receiver. Then the, the receiver won't be so sensitive. It won't pick up stations a bit further apart, try to work through the repeater. OK, so we've got three cavities on the receive side tuned to the transmitter frequency, three cavities on the transmit side tuned to the receiver frequency. One more point of interest. This rod here that you adjust, you have a screwdriver, adjust it so this moves in and out. OK, this rod is made of a, a special material called Invar. I've never heard of that, but apparently it's made of this Invar material because it doesn't stretch and shrink. It won't expand with heat and shrink with cold, because if it does, Say, you know, it's in the winter, minus whatever, this will shrink and adjust. <laughs> it'll pull that that way. Red hot summer, which we don't see many of, and it'll expand. It'll push that that way. So it puts the whole thing off resonance. It just detunes the thing. So we don't want that. So that's made of Invar. That's interesting, isn't it? This is the heart of the repeater. And as Roy said, the, uh, the, the transceivers and other bits and pieces, they're the arms and legs. So the logic's the brain, 
this duplexer is the heart. So let's have a little look on the blackboard. If we were to look at this on a spectrum analyzer, this is what we'd see. This is the low pass side, the high pass, all right? This is the transmitter frequency, and this is the receiver frequency. This is the waveform you would see. So the transmitter frequency, we don't want going into the receiver, right? So we're going to attenuate it. So what you do on the spectrum analyzer, on the receive side of the duplexer here, you adjust it for maximum attenuation at the transmit frequency. Okay, now the receiver, what you do on the, that's the receive frequency, the transmitter side of the duplexer, you adjust here for maximum attenuation on the receive frequency. With our six pole filter in total, three each side, we've got 30, 30, 30. So we've got 90 dB attenuation there, 90 dB attenuation there, which gives us a total of 180 dB attenuation. Now, the transmitter is 10 watts, which is plus 40 dBm. The receiver is sensitive down to minus 121 dBm, so we need to overcome 61 dBm so we can transmit and receive on the same aerial at the same time. Our total isolation is 180 dB, so we're well within the limits of the receive and the transmit. So each cavity, each of the six cavities, gives us 30 dB of notch, OK? The insertion loss of the duplexer is 0.5 dB both sides. So we've got a total insertion loss of 1 dB, which is fine. That's not a lot at all. I said I'd let you hear the eye dent, didn't I, before you go any further. Here it is. This is the Rustington repeater, GB3 RL. Not a brilliant recording. <laughs> But uh, that's it, GB3RL. An analogy for you. There we are, Phantom River. Look at that, a bottle of wine. Listen to this. Got it right in the end. Did you hear that? Imagine this is a cavity and the wine in there is the up and down plate, the capacity bit, okay? Screw adjuster. So you hear that? that that's the resonant frequency with that much wine. There you go. If I now drink a pint of wine, well, not really. Don't try this at home. Mm, that's nice. Right. You hear that? That's changed in frequency, isn't it? In pitch. So it's changed the resonant frequency of the cavity, which is the wine bottle. Right, I shall see it in a minute. No, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good analogy as to what is happening inside that cavity I know ours is a, it's not square is it it's oblong and square shaped um, very often the cavities like this are round especially cavities for two meters I've been talking about 70 cents two meter cavities are big things you know they're, they're that round and they're like that they're like kind of big fire extinguishers because the lower in frequency you go the bigger the cavity has got to be but that might just give you an idea of what's happening when you adjust that that threaded rod up and down it's amazing how quickly alcohol evaporates isn't it no that's all gone must be warm in here okay <laughs> that'll do thanks for watching i hope that's been of some use to you it can be well it is a complicated subject cavities and all this attenuation and stuff like that it, it is it is complicated so if you don't grasp it straight away you know don't worry don't think oh i'll never understand this you know watch the video again and uh, give it some thought anyway i hope it's helped thanks for watching as always i shall see you next time bye bye for now